Hello, and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial video. With 1.16 around the corner, there's a lot of interest in the new Nether features in the Nether update. However, to access the full set of Nether features in your world, you may want to reset your Nether. Now, there's no way to reset your Nether in game, but today I'm going to show you an easy tool that allows you to not only reset your Nether, but control what part of the Nethers you want to delete and reset. So I'm coming to you from the TechRock server. So this is a server for technical Minecraft players and they have a beautiful nether hub. And so what I'm going to do in this tutorial is I am going to erase this nether hub. And I'm going to show you how to do that on Windows 10 using some tools that I have developed. So before we get started, I want to sort of give you a tour of the Nether hub in the TechRock server. So this is the central hub. If we walk around, we see that they have removed a ton of bedrock and they can see the Nether sky. Same time, they have lots of tunnels to various parts of their Nether. And um, so what we're going to do is erase all this data. And I'm going to show you with a very easy tool that's much more efficient than any of the other tutorials that you have seen out there on YouTube. In order to reset our nether, we're going to download two tools. The first is MCBE Repair, which is a toolkit that I have developed. And the second is BusyBox, which is a set of Unix-like tools for Windows. And that's going to allow us to bring the most out of MCBE Repair in order to modify worlds. So if we go to MCBE Repair's website, so it's hosted on GitHub, and that we are now on GitHub. So if we scroll down, we can see the README for MCBE Repair. But I just wanted to point out the tools that are possible. So MCBE Repair has a tool set for listing all the data inside a Minecraft world. So most data is stored in chunks. And so this is locations in which you have an X coordinate, a Z coordinate, a dimension, and the type of data. Sort of the majority of data in Minecraft is stored like this. There's also some things like portals and some other tags that store other data. So with MNCB repair, there's a function called list keys that allows you to list all these records in your data. And so we're going to be using today list keys to analyze a world, and then we're going to be using BusyBox to filter that data. So with RM keys, we can actually remove keys that are in a database, so remove data um, that's in a database. And um, that's going to allow us to reset our in. There's additional tools inside MBE pair that I'm not going to cover today. One of them is dump key, which allows you to output the contents of a um, key. And write key allows you to insert contents of a key. In addition, there's repair, which runs the internal repair program on a database. And this can be used to fix a broken database. And then copy all, which is one way to make a copy of your database that is of smaller size. So within the MCBE repair uh, website, there are examples of how to use it. So, the so we're going to be using the first one today about resetting the nether and the portals. There's also tips on how to reset the end, how to modify, delete, or overworld chunks that are too far away, um, copy data around, and sort of things. So the first thing we're going to do now that we're here is that we're going to download the release. So I have made one release of this, and it is version 0 0.1.0. So we're going to down, get on here, and we're going to click the Win64 zip. So this is going to download a binary that we can run on our computer. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to download BusyBox. So if we go to BusyBox website, BusyBox is a 
single binary that contains many Unix tools. It's used in a lot of embedded Linux systems, but this website has a version that will run on Windows. So the reason why we're using it is um, to provide a lot of power to MCPE repair, and it's a sort of a simple download that will give us a lot more power out of, out of MCBE repair. So if we go down to scroll down, down here to the BusyBox 64. I'm going to download the BusyBox 64 because I am on a 64-bit Windows machine. Um, if you are on a 32-bit Windows machine, I haven't compiled MCBE repair or tested it on that. So I highly recommend you do this on a 64-bit Windows machine. So with those two downloaded, we're now going to um, go to our downloads folder. This is my downloads directory. And you see I have a uh, download of BusyBox and the download for MCBE repair. The MCBE repair needs to be extracted, so I'm going to click on this and do extract all. I'm going to remove this folder, leaving it just to downloads. I'm going to unclick show extracted files when complete. I'm going to click extract. This is going to give me a folder in my downloads directory. If I click on that, see I now have a bin directory and a doc directory. Inside bin is the location of MCBE repair and additional DLLs that it needs to run. So our next step is we're going to copy all of this into our, our world directory for our Minecraft installation, and that will allow us to easily run MCBE repair and busy box on our world files. In order to access our Minecraft directory, we're going to copy the path here. I'm going to click here and go copy. Once I have this copied, I'm going to run Windows R. So it's going to pop up our run command and we're going to run command CMD. So this is going to give us a Windows terminal window. And so this is a command line way to interact with your Windows machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my prompt to prompt dollar sign G. And so this is going to make my prompt shorter. The reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to a long directory. This is optional. You don't have to do it, but I'm doing it in order to um, let you see my commands better. So now we need to go to the Minecraft directory and that's going to be CD for change directory. We're going to come up here and we're going to paste our directory and then press enter. So this is going to take us to a new directory and we can see that by now typing CD with nothing and it's going to print out our current directory. And I see that I'm in my Minecraft worlds directory. So now from here, I want to type explore dot and this is going to open up a Windows Explorer um, window in this directory. If I open this up, we now see that I have a Windows Explorer tab with directories that look like this. If I go up one level, see I am in my Minecraft directory. So I'm going to go back to Minecraft Worlds. What we're going to do is we're going to copy our binaries here. So I'm going to go back to my Downloads folder here. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to copy and paste them into my Minecraft Worlds folder. Now if we go back to our BusyBox, go up one level to Downloads, I want to copy this and also put it in my Minecraft Worlds directory. So within our Minecraft world file, we have the files that we pasted and our um, directories for our Minecraft worlds. So if we look at a directory, within the directory we have a DB folder. So this is where the database is that Minecraft stores its data. And we have information about the world and a text file that holds the file name. So if we click on this file, and we see that this is the TechRock survival server. So this is the directory that we are going to be working with today. So this is our um, XS directory. So let's remember that. Now we're going to go 
back to our command prompt and we're going to type the following command to get into busybox. We're going to do busybox 64.exe sh. So what this is going to do is it's going to create a Unix shell that's going to allow us to run MCB repair at its full power. This is going to allow us to use a tool called awk, which will make it um, really easy to filter the results of MCB repair. So the command is busybox 64exe sh. When we press enter, we are now shown a different prompt. So this dollar sign signifies it's a different prompt and we are now in um, our bash prompt. So what I'm going to do here is I'm first I'm going to um, run the run a set of variable ps1 is equal to dollar sign space the quotation dollar sign space. When I do that it's going to change my prompt. So I'm going to get rid of this really really long path. So this is optional. I'm doing it so you can see the commands I'm typing. You don't actually have to do this. Um, but it is definitely very helpful for me at this point. First thing we're going to do is we're going to run um, MCB e repairs help command to get a list of all commands it supports. So we're going to do a dot slash MCB e repair dot exe help. So this is going to um, tell us how to use MCB e repair. So the command is MCB repair command and args. So this is a list of our commands and the two commands we're going to be talking about today are list keys and rm keys. In order to run list keys, we're going to do mcbe repair.exe list keys and if we press enter it's going to give us a usage. So that's going to be um, mcbe repair list keys then our minecraft world directory that's going to print out a list of all the key information in our directory. We're going to send that to list, uh, a list file. Maybe repair exe list keys and then xs and I'm going to press tab to complete it. So xs to a that's going to auto complete. And then we're going to redirect our output to list.txt. That's going to take a bit to run because we're working in a large world. But when that's over, we're going to see um, what's in list. Now that this is completed, we're going to look at list. So we're going to do less list.txt. And this is going to show us the contents of our file. What we see here is that we have um, tab separated values. So we have a header information. The first column is key. Second column is the size of the data stored in that key, the chunk coordinate in X, the chunk coordinate in Z, which dimension it is in, the tag for the type of data that's stored there, and if it is a um, subchunk data, which of the subchunks it is in. Now that we have our list.txt of our chunk data, we're going to use a tool called awk provided by busybox to filter this um, data. So awk is a really good tool for extracting information from tabular data. In our case, we are going to extract all rows in which the fifth column is one, and that was going to correspond to our nether data. So the way to do that, we're going to do awk single quote five is equal to one. And then we're going to do list.txt and we're going to save the output to nether.txt. So that's going to run. And if we look at it, nether.txt, we're going to see that um, we have all the rows in which we have nether data. So that's the one here. However, we really only need the key. And so we only need the first column here. So we're going to change our nether, our awk command to um, instead of being, uh, instead of outputting the whole line, the only output print one. So this is only going to output our first column. So we're gonna do awk, dollar sign five equals one, print, dollar sign one, list.txt to nether.txt. If we do this and run it, then we look at nether, text again. 
we see that we only have our key information. Next, we're going to use this nether.txt to delete all of our nether keys. And the tool for doing that is mcbe repair .exe rm keys. So we look at the uses for that. So um, our documentation is mcbe repair .exe rm keys, Minecraft world directory. And then you can either specify the keys on the command line or you can send it a text file like nether.txt. So that's what we're going to be doing. The first one, mcbe repair rm keys, our xs uh, folder directory. And that's going to send it to nether.txt. So we're going to run this command. So mcbe repair.exe rm keys xs2a, so our folder, and then we're going to send it to nether.txt. We're going to read from nether.txt, and that's going to remove all of our nether keys in our uh, world. It's going to give us an output of all the keys it's deleting. And when this is done, we're going to open up Minecraft and we're going to see that our nether is now gone. That beautiful nether hub that they spent months working on in TechRock, all of the um, tunnels, that's all going to be gone at the end of this. RM keys has finished working and this is now the fact that we have deleted the nether. And so we can check really quickly by running list keys again. And so if we go to run our list keys command, so I'm pressing up arrow to go back into my history. I'm going to go look for our original, our last time I did um, NCB pair. So now we're going to do list again, list keys again. And after that, I'm going to run the nether search again. And if we've deleted all the keys, then that should fail. That we shouldn't find any records in which you have data from the nether. Now we're going to run awk. $5 equals 1. And we're going to send it in list.txt. And we found no line. So all of our data has now been deleted for the nether. In a second, I'm going to jump in back into Minecraft and I'm going to show you what happens when we have deleted the nether. So we're back on the TechRock server after having deleted all of our chunk data from our nether. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to go into that nether portal to demonstrate that the nether has been reset. So the nether hub we were in previously is no longer there. Instead, the portal is going to take us to um, an empty nether with fresh chunks. So now we're going to go into the nether and um, let's see what happens. So we're dying. Uh, we ended up teleporting ourselves into a bunch of nether rack. Let me clear out the space here. So what happened is that when we deleted the nether data, uh, we didn't delete the portal data. What that means is that the game still thinks that there is another portal here, specifically its exit. When in reality, there's nothing here. And so if you use a tool like MCC Toolchest or Universal Minecraft Editor to delete chunk data to reset your nether, but you don't delete or modify your portal data, you're going to have uh, portals that don't exist. So these are known as ghost portals. The problem is, is that whereas in the old world, this was a wide open nether portal, nether hub, um, in our reset world, it is a bunch of nether rack. So it teleported us straight into nether rack, uh, and we would have suffocated had we not broken enough to survive it. And so the fix for this is to head back to MCBE repair and delete our portal data. In order to delete our portal data, we're going to use RM keys again. In this case, we're going to do dot slash MCBE repair RM keys. RM keys, and we're going to follow up with our folder where our world lives, and then we're going to type portals. This is going to be lowercase 
portals. Press enter. That's going to delete the key portals. So now when we go back into our world, it will have forgotten all of our portal data, both in the nether and in the overworld. So the portals will still be there in the overworld. They won't have been removed and um, but they won't have um, the game won't know where they are in order to activate them you need to enter one and then that'll create a new entry and exit before i forget um, in order to exit from busybox we want to type exit and then we're back into command and now to exit from here we're going to type exit again it's going to take us out of both both of those tools. So we've deleted our nether data and we have deleted our portal records. So now I'm gonna go back to this portal one more time to head to the end and we're gonna see if uh, we now spawn back in the same location we did before. So in this case, we did not. The game has now recognized that we do not have a portal in the end and it has created one for us. And of course, it has now placed us uh, much lower than we were before. So before we were up at around y equals 112, and so now we're back to um, y equals 43. So here is what the nether looked like before we reset the chunks. You can see there is a lot of building and construction in here, but now it looks like this. We have deleted our chunks and um, so the game has recreated them, refreshed them based on the seed and um, we now have a fresh nether. So when 1.16 comes out, the nether update, you can do the same procedure to completely reset your nether to get all the sort of new nether biomes and the new um, fresh nether update. So in this tutorial, I have shown you how to use MCBE repair to reset your nether by deleting your nether chunk data and your portal data. I've shown you why it is important to delete your portal data because otherwise you will get stuck where you don't want to be stuck you, as you won't have any actual portals in the end and the game will still think you are if you haven't deleted your portal data. Um, so MCBE repair can be used for a lot of other things in this tutorial. So it can be used, for instance, to reset your end. Um, it can be used to, um, within your end, you can actually reset just your end islands. And there's instructions in the documentation of MCBE repair on how to do that using awk. Um, you can also do it to, you know, prune your world. So prune everything outside a certain region and other fun things. Um, so whereas other tutorials may have shown you how to do that manually using uh, MCC tool chest or universal Minecraft editor, um, the power of MCB repair is that you can automate that process. Of course, to get the most out of MCB repair, I highly recommend you use BusyBox on Windows. And so that because it comes with a version of awk, and so awk allows you to get a lot of power out of the data. MCB repair also has tools in it that allows you to shrink your worlds uh, without losing any data, it allows you to repair your worlds if they're corrupted. And I highly recommend you browse around the documentation and let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you'd kind of want that MCB repair could do. I also have uh, another tool set I'm working on called our bedrock that's going to be more powerful than MCB repair and it can allow you to actually like inspect data in your world and only selectively de delete chunks. So this is the toolbox I'm going to use when 1.16 is actually out to selectively delete nether chunks. So we're going to try to keep nether chunks that we built in but delete everything else and so that's probably going to use our bedrock when that comes out. So I'm Rufus. I'd like to thank you for watching and good night.